So today we have a 2013 Chevy Silverado 1500 4x4 and it's got a problem with the four-wheel drive. When you select auto you can hear the transfer case motor shift. Four high you can hear it shift but it doesn't drive the front wheels so we're gonna put it up in the air and see if the front axle actuator is engaging and then maybe we'll throw a scanner on it and check for codes. So there is no codes in the transfer case from what I can see. So we're going to look at uh, data or a functional test and see if we can command that front axle actuator on because I don't hear it running. Start the engine, apply and hold the brake pedal. Set. Start the engine and put, put the brake on. Put the transmission in neutral. Is that the front axle? Yeah. yeah. Put the tranny in, tranny in neutral. Yeah, the transmission. All right. I heard it engage. Okay, so it seems to be working on here, so we're gonna lift this up and have a look underneath. Okay, so we're underneath the vehicle here. I'm going to have my assistant put it into four high. Go ahead. So you can hear the transfer case shift. The front drive shaft is locked up now. You don't have your foot on the brake, do you? Oh, there we go. So this actuator is not engaging. Oh, here we go. I see the shaft has come out. Hmm. Have you got a lift in this? I, uh, two inch le or inch, inch and a half level or something like that. Yeah, okay. Well, this axle flange is pulled out. That's why it's disengaged. All right, we're going to have to take this skid plate off and have a look inside here. So you can weasel that axle housing out of there by just undoing the CV shaft on the flange here. So put my camera right. And undoing these two bolts on the mount, the end of the axle will drop down, the end of the housing will drop down enough that you can just barely get it out of there. So I'm going to show you what I found wrong. There was some metal inside here. You can see the silvery content and I'll show you what that's from. So here's a look at the parts from the inside of the axle. So I'm going to pull this inner axle shaft out. Now there's a, a thrust washer here that's quite thick. And the way this collar works, that's in two-wheel drive and that's in four-wheel drive. So I'm going to pull this piece off. And I've already had this apart. And down below here is a, a steel washer and there was a round snap ring in here like they used to use on the other ones and that snap ring was actually about halfway up on the shaft that had popped off because the axle had pulled out. Let's pull this axle shaft out so you can see what's happened to this washer. So you can see that washer is, is worn significantly and this is the only thing that holds this axle in is that round snap ring and it just pulled right through as you can see so in my opinion there should have they should have a square snap ring in this groove rather than this round one but this one is probably in here so that the axle shaft can be pulled out to service the axle seal uh, this design has changed from the previous design where they actually had a gear and a sliding collar Now this piece slides completely. Instead, it replaces the two pieces that the older design had. So tomorrow I'm going to check on the availability of that thrust washer, a new snap ring. I think it would be better with a square snap ring in this groove. And I think these teeth are fine. We're going to put it back together like that. And obviously a new gasket. So here's another look at this shaft once I took it out you can see where this snap ring sits 
it's actually worn the teeth on the gear because of some th side thrust and you can see this wear on this housing or on this uh, washer that's the only thing that holds this axle in and I'm sure that these minor uh, lift kits put more thrust on the axle shaft in that direction because the you uh, CV shaft is is working at a, a steeper angle this in my opinion would be better if it had a square snap ring in here instead of this type of snap ring as I mentioned earlier hmm I wonder if we can find a, a square snap ring that fits in there or if we could actually machine this well we'll look and see what's available for parts see this is the type of snap ring I think would be better if it was in here nice square snap ring like that instead of round obviously you can remove replace the axle seal by pulling this whole assembly off I found these two snap rings in some used parts that I had. This one's too big and the other one's too small. So I'm going to see if I can find one of that style and use that. Maybe clean this groove up a little bit so that it's more square because this round snap ring is going to have a tendency to just want to roll right off there because of the way that groove is worn. And I don't really want to put an axle shaft in this thing. So there's the part number for the thrust washer inside the case, 2598219. There is the axle seal, 22761722 from GM. And the cover gasket, or the gasket, where is the gasket? Right there, 152070970. Going to replace that gasket as well. Now I managed to get a couple of snap rings these style snap rings from Napa and I can't really be sure of the part number because they were all mixed up in a bin and they uh, I'll post the number that I think they gave me but I'm not a hundred percent certain I've cleaned up this groove on the shaft here focus cleaned up that groove on the shaft with a zip cut blade to kind of square the edge of it and I'm going to put two snap rings in there so we'll go ahead and reassemble this thing. So I decided to replace that outer axle seal just simply because we're here. It wasn't leaking, but sure as shit, if I put it together without changing it, it will leak. I've cleaned this gasket surface off. Uh, we're going to reassemble the axle shaft here, and I'll show you where I'm going to put that snap ring. So the snap ring that I'm using measures 1.095 inches inside diameter at rest. That shaft is 1.11 inside the groove. So there's the two snap rings installed. I'm going to put some grease around here, although it's not supposed to wear against there, but it ends up pulling on there. I believe because of the suspension mods and the lift kit, that washer with the ears on it doesn't turn. So I'm just going to put a little bit of grease on there. And again, I put two snap rings to take up the, the groove width, and I cleaned up the groove with a zip cut blade on the lathe. So there it is reassembled. Now there's a thrust washer, a quite large one that goes in here that has to be in there. When this goes into four wheel lock this catches by about half of that tooth which seems odd but that's the way it was engineered. Now this shaft will go down slightly but that's about all that drives it. The older one used to have a thinner washer in here, a much thinner washer but obviously this is the way it was engineered. So we're going to check end play on this axle shaft when it's in the housing. So we've got to make sure that that washer's on there. Put this gear back in. I've checked this needle bearing. It seems good. I'm going to put a little bit of grease in it like I have and clean up the housing. So there's the housing prep. Now we have to push this axle shaft up out of the way and then reinsert it. So I'm going to have to try to do that. It would be nice if I had another person here to hold this axle shaft at the same time. But I don't, so we'll give it our best shot. Well, that wasn't so bad after all. It went in actually pretty easy.
Well, we're going to look up the torque for those bolts. I'm sure that's around 45, but I'll double check. So there it is all back together again. I'm checking the end play on this shaft. And there's about a, oh, a little bit better than a sixteenth of an inch. But like I said, I think this spacer block here, the leveling kit, puts more stress on that washer pulling on that snap ring and that round snap ring that GM originally uses mm, doesn't bode well. Anyways, the 4x4 should work fine now. Thanks for watching.